for inviting me to the show. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, um, I've had a few people in the past few weeks and months that have uh, forwarded your videos to me because they're aware of what I'm doing, you see, with the astrotheology, etc. And um, so it was quite interesting. I was uh, blown away with your research. It's um, quite appropriate. And uh, I have uh, my own take. I've already uh, mentioned this to you, of course, um, uh, because I believe that um, what's going on is uh, happening on many levels, as with everything that uh, the churches do, and in particular, the Vatican. You know, the Vatican have been um, very clever in uh, the way they do things, especially their artistic works, you know, in their domes and in their uh, sculptures, etc., um, they always have two or three levels of meaning. Uh, so look, without further ado, let's get into uh, your uh, research and share that with people because I really believe that uh, this needs to be shared and that's why I've um, got you to come onto the show and I'm, I really appreciate your work too, Dan, well, very much. So uh, perhaps we could start with a question, um, What? Uh, how about uh, if you tell people about your path, your your journey, what led you to this discovery, etc. Thank you. Sure. Well, um, I'm a systems analyst normally, and uh, so I've been out of a job for a few months. I've had some more time on my hands to kind of take a look at this stuff. But as a systems analyst, you know, I get into some pretty nitty-gritty analysis, and I started noticing that, uh, I, as a matter of fact, I was doing research on UFOs at one point, and I started seeing something in the clouds you know, a lot of us look to the clouds a lot of times, which is actually a very good uh, thing to do because it teaches you to look for what, in my opinion, I call light density differences, things that people wouldn't normally pick up on because uh, they just they just kind of glance at things and they look away, but they don't really look at the detail of it. So I started looking at what I thought were these uh, UFOs in the clouds, and for whatever reason, it led me to looking at nebulas, and I started noticing that something, either the experience of looking in the nebulas or, or something happened to me physically to where I could see these different light densities easier than other people. And so I, when I started looking in the Orion Nebula, it just so happened at the same time I was looking at, um, at art in some of these cathedrals. And so I noticed a pattern starting to develop between the Orion Nebula and what I was noticing in one particular church, uh, which is called the St. Charles Church, and it's located in Vienna, Austria. And I started noticing there was a pattern there because I was, you know, you, you see these cloud formations, but then it wasn't just that. I was seeing other things around the cloud formations, and they were all appearing on this altar. And so that's basically what led me to... to start looking at other things. And, I, and since then, I've started finding the same patterns developing over other cathedrals, such as the Church of the Gisu, which is the mother of the Jesuits church, also the Cathedral of uh, St. Peter as well. So these patterns started developing, and they were difficult to 
communicate it first, but after a while I was able to turn it into more of a pattern recognition thing rather than just saying, oh, this is what I'm seeing and leaving it at that. You know, I, I try to make sure that I u always used other pictures and other references to confirm what I'm seeing. Well, okay. So now you mentioned the Church of the Jesuits. What was the name of that one again? It's called the Church of the Gisu, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's spelled G-E-S-U, and it was built in 1580. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was built in 1580, and then the, the artwork that, uh, that was done in the dome, which is very interesting, the name of it is called the, uh, the Triumph of the Name of Jesus by Giovanni Astita Galli. And what's really interesting about it is the name is called the Triumph of the Name of Jesus, but yet they're showing the Orion Nebula. Incredible. And um, so just by looking at the dome uh, mural, which was painted by uh, Giovanni Battista Galli, did you say, mm -hmm. um, you notice this um, correspondence with the uh, Orion Nebula. Right. If you take a look at the um, this particular cathedral, and that dome, what you notice are these, the same pattern formations that I always see. There is a cloud formation on the left side, and there is one on the right side. You always have this bright area that's right in the middle. And then above all of that, you always see this dome or this arch. And so if you follow the right cloud and then the arch over to the other one, you see the exact same thing. And the detail inside the one in the Church of the Gisu is so detailed that you can actually see there's a, a center part of the cloud that has a black hole in it that almost identically matches the one that I see in the nebula. And so this same pattern is developing, um, and I, there's actually one picture I show where I have four or five of them all together for each of the things that I'm seeing. So you can really kind of kind of get an eye of, yeah, that's pretty much the same thing on all of them. And this actually goes... Yeah, I noticed that. And, yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say, the um, the arch that you see above the clouds, it looks like an outstretched, uh, a man with outstretched arms, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And uh, there's there's actually other pictures as well. In fact, on my Facebook, I just added a picture that shows what, um, what I'm seeing. If you're not looking at these altars showing that particular picture, there's still other pictures out there that show the same thing depicting the Orion Nebula. And what it typically is is it's typically this Christ archetype. And then above his head, you see this dove. And the dove is basically the same thing as the tetragrammaton or um, this other these other bright trinity things that you see in the very center. And so you have the Christ archetype underneath. You have the dove above his head. And then you have this, this figure with his arms stretched out. And that basically matches what you're seeing in the Orion Nebula. And what's more interesting even than that is that if you take a look at the general shape of these pictures, they all have the shape of a womb. And and so it appears that, I guess, when you take a look at the five pictures that I've shown on my Facebook, it appears that it's depicting some kind of a womb of creation. And when you tie that to, you know, the fact that the, the Orion Nebula is a stellar nursery where suns are born it starts to kind of click that maybe this is what they're talking about. Yeah, it seems to indicate, it seems to be pointing to something, doesn't it? It's always sort of uh, pointing to this focus, focal area where light seems to be emanating and you have all these holy figures standing around and it seems to be saying, well, I mean, this is Orion uh, where uh, all the glorious stuff happens. Now, what really impresses me about this, Danny, is the fact that um, in my video presentations, I'm always pointing to the fact that in the constellation of Taurus, the we have the Pleiades, you have the Hyades, you have Aldebaran, uh, and you also have Betelgeuse, which are two red stars. Now, there are only four red stars in the sky, <laughs> in the heavens. There are only four. Now, there are two in the sector of Taurus, one in Taurus and one in Orion. So it's very special. And I've been pointing people to this area as very, very special in all of the mythologies and scriptures, etc. For the 
very reason um, that uh, Orion, and I will explain many more reasons, but I just want to get your take on this. Um, Orion has always been considered to be the lamb, you see? Yes. And um, you did mention there, yeah, it, the lamb is Orion. And um, he, Wasn't Christ also called the lamb? Right in the, in the middle of Exactly, exactly. That's the point. I mean, there's, they're always putting Christ in the middle there, aren't they? They seem to be putting Christ there. What do you uh, think is the reason for that? I don't know, but what I find very interesting about this Orion Nebula is because, I guess some people can't see it, but to me it's very obvious. But if you adjust the lighting, you can clearly see the face of a man underneath the what I'm now calling the uh, Star of David, or the star tetrahedron that seems to be there. And for whatever reason, his head seems to be right there at the bottom of this thing, which also matches up to the pictures that I'm seeing and everything. And so when you say the lamb, you know, I think of, you know, Christ was also called the lamb, so was Horus, right? Yeah. So we seem to have some kind of a, a connection there. And... uh you know, the, the recent findings that I've found with this uh, star tetrahedron are just absolutely just amazing. I, I can't believe that NASA hasn't come out to say anything about it. Yeah, I, I, you can see it. It's there. Oh, yeah. It's uh, quite an amazing... Now, how do you then... This is the next question. <laughs> the next big question is how do you suppose uh, the Jesuits in the 15, late 1500s <laughs> knew what the Orion Nebula look like that I is mean, that is the big is question isn't it right <laughs> that does seem to be the big question yeah. because what we have is when we take a look at the cloud formations that are out there and when i match them to what's in these churches we're talking about a telescope that is spitzer quality um, that can see things you can't normally see in regular lighting conditions and the first pictures that were taken were taken in 1880 of the Orion Nebula, and if you haven't seen those, they basically look like the outer shape of it, just a white blob. There's no way that you could see those cloud formations on the inside. So the question is, how were they able to see the level of detail in those things? And well, I believe it was 16, I believe it was the early 1600s when the Church of the Gisu came out with their version of what I'm seeing as Orion. But that question still lies there. Either we're talking something strange. I mean, no matter how you look at it, we're talking something that's odd. It's either time travel or they got a, they got a hold of a picture from some ancient civilization that could, that's already been able to see it, or someone gave them a picture of it, or we're talking about some kind of channeling or something like that. But nothing normal makes sense here. No, no, that's for sure. You would think that um, they would have to have had a very, very powerful telescope since it was only invented in. 30 by Galileo Galilei. So, uh, and I don't think they've had powerful uh, telescopes enough to see that nebula. No, not like that. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, unless they had uh, technology that we're, we are not aware of, you see, because that's a possibility. The, that, that is the, um, the logical explanation, isn't it? But of course, we don't have any evidence that they did have telescopes of that kind of capacity to film and take photographs of the Orion Nebula like that, like we have now from the Hubble. Well, you know, something, telescope. something really right? interesting about the history of the, uh, of, you know, Galileo, when, when he actually was looking at the stars around the Orion system, he never noted the nebulous part, which is where the Orion Nebula is. And, you know, of course, he faced the Inquisition in, I believe, 1618. And then the first published version of whatever the Orion Nebula was, was actually published by Jesuits. And it was known, if you go to, um, to Wikipedia, you find that the first published version was quite ambiguous. They didn't really want to disclose much about it. And, um, you know, and even if you look out 